Welcome, everybody. It's time for another episode of Sales Pipeline. So grab your board. We're going to catch a wave and see what's the latest in sales pipeline development with Matt Hines. There was no superlative, no adjective, just Matt Hines. No, you got me thrown off in general. I think, you know, usually we've got this all just dialed in. I think we're working on a little bit of a audio, audio video uh, challenge this morning, which, you know, does, which happens from time to time. I think so. Uh, I don't think it's picking up your mic very good here, but we'll, we'll make the best of it here. All right. Well, I'm going to keep, I'm going to continue to play with it as we get our, our great guests today. So we're rolling. I'm going to continue to play, see if I can make this sound a little better for everybody, but appreciate everyone joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio today. Uh, you can join us every week at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, uh, right here on Sales Pipeline Radio. You can always catch us at salespipelineradio.com, and you can always catch past episodes at salespipelineradio.com or through our podcast at Google Play or the iTunes Store. Every week we are featuring some of the best in B2B sales and marketing leaders' insights, uh, and today is no exception. Very excited to have with us Daniel Gonger, who is the uh, CM mo at pfl those are a lot of acronyms but i'm gonna have him uh, talk a little about what he's working on these days and uh, and sort of what uh, what is not just a return to direct mail but the rise of tactile marketing and integrating online and offline channels to increase lead generation and uh, prospect uh, engagement daniel thanks so much for joining us today yeah thanks for having me matt it's a pleasure to be here so talk a little bit about you know your role and then more importantly sort of the evolution of pfl and sort of why you know, you guys are yeah, are such a champion of you know not only better integrated marketing, but you know it, you know increasing tactile marketing and physical marketing, physical mailers and and uh, physical mailing marketing opportunities uh, in today's uh, more digital age. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll give a little context on just uh, PFL. So uh, PFL is actually better known maybe as PrintingForLess.com, just in terms of the hundreds of thousands of customers we've served, uh, offering just standard printing services via e-commerce. And we've been around since 1999. We were the first uh, people to do that. And But over the years, we've evolved uh, beyond just providing print to really uh, evolving so, to solutions uh, that really help people get more value out of those interactions with their customers, and that's what we'll talk a little bit about today. Uh, my role here, I've, I've been at the company for uh, 12 years. I started in customer service and uh, uh did a variety of different things throughout my path to CMO, um, but I've been in CMO for about a, a half that time. And today, you know, so it's really uh, evolving our brand, evolving our strategy on, on how do we really help our customers be successful with tactile marketing and direct mail uh, in, in a new and different way. So why is direct mail back? Like, what is it about direct mail that's working well? Is it something different uh, that we're seeing today? Is it uh, what is it that uh, that makes us that it's working so well now? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of factors that play into that. So direct mail was kind of a forgotten channel, right? Because. Uh, I think largely because it was so much easier to move to digital and people were seeing such great results with digital marketing. I, I My career largely was stemmed around digital marketing. Even for a good chunk of that when I was working at a printing company, we focused really, really heavily on digital marketing. And uh, a big part of that was because it was, it was difficult. It was hard to actually execute a campaign. It was hard to just get it, get it out the door to get your list and all these different details. And whereas doing some digital marketing, sending emails, doing display advertising was kind of a few clicks. It, was, it seemed a lot easier, and it seemed like it was lower cost and like it, we could get more benefit out of it because of the number of people. But that was kind of a continuation, I think, of the trend of you think about television and radio of mass media marketing, right? It's how we, why we were having such success with uh, digital marketing. It's not that we were great marketers, but it was just because of the pure volume of what we were able to do and with a kind of a somewhat captive audience. And a lot of that's changed today. You know, thank God we don't have AOL say you got mail every time we get an email, right? Because it would be just on a continuous hum uh, all the time, and so I think you know marketers uh, fled from from direct mail. We kind of forgot about it as a channel. Our inboxes aren't that full, and now we have a whole new generation um, of business people who uh, haven't really been exposed to it, but actually really enjoy it. And that's millennials. And there's a bunch of research out there that says how much value that how, how they enjoy checking the mail, they enjoy getting mail, and particularly uh, dimensional components. 
And then I think the, the, the other comp- uh, you know I think that you know we get so many emails we get so many di- you know digital ads uh, in, in front of us and and I think a lot of marketers are just that are that are enamored with the marketing of more right it's more emails more digital more clicks more retweets and maybe aren't doing the the math on what it's really worth to get the attention of their most important prospects yes direct mail costs a little more in many cases yes it may take a little time to more time to get up and execute but are we worried about more or are we worried about better are we worried about more better quality do we want responses and you know and metrics and conversions that we can buy a beer with? And I think for me, that's one of the reasons why direct mail is really becoming more involved in, in marketing programs, especially in strategic account environments. Absolutely. I, I can agree more. I think that, that connection, that higher impact that, that people kind of crave too, because the, the impact of an email or in the next banner ad you see today is just not that great to a customer. And so how do you... Uh, um, show that you, uh, from a marketer standpoint, that you value a customer's time and how do you have a little bit higher impact piece. And I think direct mail fulfills that need uh, from both the customer's perspective and from the marketer's perspective. You know, one one thing I think also that is just kind of a, a fun thing from marketers. So uh, as a digital marketer, I really only get to think is in 2D. And I know there's augmented reality and virtual reality and stuff that's, that's coming, and that will be another channel that marketers are able to leverage. But in digital marketing, I really get 2D. Um, but when I go to uh, direct mail now, I can do 3D because I don't have to send just a postcard or a letter. I can send a package, things like that. So from a crit- creativity level, it's a lot of fun to work on projects like that too. And I, I, we see that from a lot of our customers who just are really excited about the things that they can create now. And do you, are you, do you tend to see that you're working with marketers that really are sort of making the jump from quantity to quality that are more focused on you know, sales pipeline contribution, more focused on sales metrics? Is that another reason why they're now looking at direct mail as a, as a tool that can more directly and more precisely achieve those revenue results? Yeah, absolutely. So being more strategic, how do I really have, how do I reach the people I really want? How do I form a a relationship that is of value? It's not just about, uh, you know, if I send 10,000 emails, uh, 20% will open and 1% will click and that will work. It's about, no, these are the accounts I really want. And then on that kind of, uh, uh, more targeted demand. That's also happening with even our more traditional mailers who we might think of, you know, so large B2C companies as well are also really looking at, like, how do I become more focused? And so people who enjoy uh, getting direct mail, who respond to direct mail, who result in a purchase, how do I identify who those folks are? How do I find more people like them? How do I target them as well? And so uh, we're seeing it from people who are just starting to do a strategic account focus who may have been largely digital marketers. And we're also seeing it from the traditional uh, folks who are uh, the, the big big mailers today move towards this more strategic target approach with direct mail. So it's one thing to say we have a sort of a strategic approach to our direct mail and are sort of saying direct mail is making a comeback. But one of the things I really like about the approach you're taking is this isn't standalone direct mail programs. Like you guys are doing a nice job of integrating these with other campaigns and really taking you know what has always been an offline channel and making it high tech. Like t- talk a little more about what that means for PFL and what you're seeing in the market that's driving success. Yeah, right. So the reason uh, I think we're, ha- we're having success and our customers are having success with, with, with direct mail is not because we think of it as a single channel, because uh, the, the reality is we don't live in a single channel world, right? Uh, we have lots of different things coming out. From us, and we don't make a decision to buy or to engage with a company based on a single interaction. And that that's what we are um, really setting out to, to help marketers understand and, and be able to do is to, okay, great, we can have an orchestrated experience across both a digital uh, our digital marketing and um, our offline marketing, and those things can work together. They can be use the same sort of message. They can inform each other, and they can just make all of our marketing way more powerful from the, co- the consumer and the customer's perspective. Now, how do you know what's working? I mean, I think, I think attribution becomes a bit of a challenge here. And I think, you know, when you're doing digital channels, maybe across, mm-hmm. you know, social versus emails versus, you know, targeted uh, sort of online ads, attribution is a little easier. Is it a, more of a challenge when you integrate the offline channels as well? And how do you sort of solve that problem? Not really. I mean, I think what the biggest problem we have with attribution, particularly in B2B, is we want to uh, give credit to a, I did this and this is what it resulted in. And just like, as I mentioned before, we don't make a decision on those one things. And so I, I think we have to look at the, the, the interaction or the 
multiple interactions that lead up to that sale. Uh, at PFL, we did our, our own test uh, pretty extensively on doing a four-way test of what we call our four-dimensional campaigns, and that includes email, uh, display, which we include social in, uh, uh, direct mail, and then web personalization. And what we found is when we took any one of those components out of our campaign, the amount of list we lost was uh, was significant, and uh, you know different different channels add a different value. But at the end of the day, we're like we we would be silly not to make sure we're doing at least those four those four things on every single one of our campaigns. I'm talking to Daniel Gogler today, who's the CMO at PFL. You can find him at pfl.com. Before we have to jump to break here in a couple minutes, uh, you guys are based in Bozeman, Montana, which is not always thought of as sort of the hotbed of marketing technology leadership. But you guys have really clearly come on the scene in a big way and, and created a really unique culture. And yet, as someone who's been there for, I think, 12 plus years, talk a little bit about sort of the advantage of, of building a company. Uh, sort of in the middle of God's country, quite frankly. I've, I've been out to where you guys are at. It's it's a, it's amazing, amazing. Uh, in a couple minutes we got before break, just talk a little bit about sort of what, what culture and what location has meant for the growth uh, and success of PFL. So, you know, there comes challenges and, and opportunities with it. I mean, I think one of the, the, the big pauses being in Montana is the, 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 the people, the work ethic, the friendliness, and that comes out, at, you know, and how we work with our customers. And so uh, we, we really like that, you know, from a – uh, kind of a business perspective, it also drives the the kind of business we create and build. And so we are uh, the largest employer in our town, uh, outside of the university and uh, hospital, and it's the largest private employer. And so that guides a lot of our principles on how we uh, uh, run our business. And so it's a sustainable business. It's not a uh, built to flip or anything like that because we, we value the, the jobs that we create for our, for our local employees and also for uh, the, the service we provide for our customers. So uh, building that evergreen company, you know, is, is part of how it's impacted the culture. And uh, we also uh, bring in a little bit of Montana fun. Uh, so I, I'm doing this interview with my dog, Daisy, in the room, and uh, hopefully you won't hear her, but uh, she's a good dog. So. Uh, well, Daisy's welcome to join Sales also- Pipeline Radio anytime. Maybe we'll come up with a question or two. No, I'm kidding. It's not- hey, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we got to pay some bills. We'll be right back with more with Daniel talking about offline marketing, talking about what we have coming up, uh, future episodes. Uh, we'll be right back. Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> Marketers acknowledge that account-based marketing is important, but what does that really mean? ABM requires a deep understanding of your target accounts and the people within its internal buying committee. Are you prepared to launch and drive results from an ABM program in your organization? Get the recording for the Modern Marketers Workshop, ABM, From Strategy to Action and Results, a fully online, on-demand workshop that includes an interactive workbook, the presentation slides, and templates, all for $195. Visit www.heinzmarketing.com slash workshops. That's H-E-I-N-Z marketing.com and get started now. In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide, to what's really working and how to apply it specifically to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. Download it free at heinzmarketing.com. All right, and after you've done that, rush right back because Matt's got a lot more with his guest. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us for Sales Pipeline Radio. If you are back listening to us live, thank you so much for joining us. If you're listening to us through the podcast, I hope you're enjoying what you see here, here, what you hear here. If you would like to hear more from Daniel at PFL, you can definitely catch this episode on demand again at salespipelineradio.com in a couple days. And we are here every week at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. In the next couple of weeks, we've got John Hall, who's going to join us and talk about influence, how to get it, earn it, and keep it in B2B sales and marketing. That's next week on Sales Pipeline Radio. Coming up after that, Martin Lidstrom is going to talk about neuromarketing. We've been teasing this for a while, Paul. The neuro, whether the, the, Martin thinks neuromarketing is going to be the next buzzword in B2B. I can tell you right now, I have no idea what that means, but we're going to find out when well, Martin joins us. Following Martin, we've got some great presentations, great guests, from, including Grant Cardone, Michael Pickey, from HubSpot, 
Uh, Nadia Gaussi uh, from Prezi going to talk about conversational sales presentations. Lots of great topics on a variety of angles on B2B sales and marketing today. I want to continue our conversation with Daniel Gogler, who's the CMO at PFL. We're talking about offline marketing, omni-channel marketing, best practices for integrating it with your organization. We've been talking mostly, Daniel, about uh, the sales or the marketing team and how they are using uh, direct mail and integrating direct mail into other channels. How are sales organizations using this, either as they integrate with their marketing organizations, as they're using their CRM and doing their own sort of field sales efforts? What, what are you seeing uh, the trends there? Yeah, so I think it's we've seen salespeople do their own direct mail campaigns, their own marketing for, for years, and that's one of the things the PFL has set out to try to help fix is, you know, we have a sales uh, person who is packaging up a book that maybe is written by the CEO and writing a note and sending it to someone or taking some, some, some swag items or maybe it's a printed copy of a white paper and doing their own kind of, call it guerrilla marketing, account-based marketing. And uh, the, the problem with that is our salespeople are not spending enough time actually doing selling activities right now. They're, they're finding swag, they're writing notes, and they're putting it in a box and taking it down to uh, the post office or, or a UPS drop-off at, to, to get that in the mail. And so uh, w- one of our solutions uh, connecting with, the, with Salesforce, so right from uh, Salesforce, the salesperson is able to uh, get access to all of those assets from swag to gifts to books to white papers, whatever uh, marketing or the sales organization wants to make a- available to them. And now they can have the power to uh, choose that item, write a personalized note, uh, and, and send it, and that gets directly delivered to the, uh, the their prospect. And additionally, when it gets delivered, they also can get some notifications on um, when it was delivered and that sort of thing so that they can choose to make their next action item. Some of the cool benefits that uh, salespeople get out of the day, now I know when my package was actually delivered in addition to the time savings, uh, but you know, we're able to actually, they actually do more of it, and, and they found it as an effective way to speed up sales cycles, a way to get re-engagement from folks that have maybe dropped off the radar. But from a marketing perspective, which I, I, I always come back to, uh, I love it because now I actually have an attribution metric or a way to apply something to uh, my swag budget, right, which has kind of been like an, an untractable, just, oh, we just spend money on it because uh, the CEO likes it or um, our salespeople like it, uh, kind of line item for marketing. But now I can actually know what is the performance of that, what am I getting um, from that. And so that's one of the big changes we're seeing how sales teams and marketers work together to do direct mail. Let's talk about a couple of objections people sometimes have for direct mail and offline marketing. I mean, you know, one of them is the price, which we talked a little bit about putting that in context. Another is the timeline. You know, a lot of marketers today are, you know, enamored with agile marketing and moving quickly and being able to conceive a program and then execute it quickly through a digital channel. I'm sure you guys hear this on occasion as well, just the lead time it takes for direct mail. Kind of what's the, what do you typically talk to clients about or what are some of your clients that are, that are using direct mail kind of tell their organizations and sales teams when that can comes up. Yeah, so uh, I'm, my, my first argument to, to marketers is that direct mail will make you a better marketer, um, and that's because it has a real t- tangible cost, and if you uh, um, do an expensive bad campaign, uh, it hurts a little more, it stings a little more. Uh, but so what, the reason it will make you a better marketer is it will make you focus on the fundamentals of marketing, which I think, uh, no offense to digital marketers out there, but we've gotten a little lazy because it was, it's cheap and it was easy to do, and the consequences of it, if something goes wrong, it's easy to fix uh, if you have a misprint or something like that. And so by having the discipline of doing direct mail, it will make you, all your marketing perform better. So that's one of the things that I like to share with marketing teams, and I, I'm a firm believer in because we see it in our own uh, marketing efforts here at PFL. So uh, that, that's an internal reflection as well. That when we when we want to do, put something in print, we actually think about our messaging, we think about our audience a lot a lot clearer because uh, we really we know that there's a real tangible cost. On the timeline side of things, uh, direct mail and those sorts of projects can move faster than they ever have before. Uh, you know, supply chain has uh, completely changed in the last uh, uh, ten years or fifteen years uh, on how fast you can you can get stuff. So uh, you know the the biggest the biggest holdup on most projects is actually uh, the, the the creative aspect, um, and then. If, if you think about direct mail in a way that it's not a batch and blast, we want to be doing it uh, data-driven, uh, just as we would nurture emails from our market automation platforms um, or sales emails for, for, from our CRM and how, how we can have those as kind of evergreen scripts that we use over again, we can now make them triggered and, and ongoing, and so it can be incredibly fast. 
So since the systems, the, the template is like your, just like your email template is already configured and we're pulling data in to send that individual piece, uh, the, you know, we can have something go out the door as, as quick as, you know, same day very frequently, but most of the time within 24 hours. And it can be in someone's mailbox, uh, pre pretty much standard is nationwide within three days within, within North America. <laughs> you know, wrapping up here in the next couple of minutes with Daniel Gogler, the CMO of PFL. Great insights into bringing direct mail back, leveraging it as an asset and a differentiator to get your message across in a crowded world of digital channels and email and social and everything else. Uh, direct mail really does seem to be uh, standing out and being leveraged by more and more uh, market leading marketers today. We just see so many examples. And even just this morning, uh, there was a MarTech vendor that was talking about creating a video channel where he will basically start start to unbox essentially some of the direct mail packages that he's getting that are clearly having an impact. Uh, you know, you wouldn't create a channel like that unless there was sort of some interest and, and differentiation around. We don't see that with email or social very often. But what happens over the next several years or at least the next couple years? I mean, is direct mail going to be cyclical? Or are we going to see this sort of kind of, uh, you know, wind down again? Or, you know, what do you, what do you see as uh, sort of some of the trend lines moving forward and, and how do B2B marketers keep up? Yeah, so I, I think we're definitely going to see uh, – Direct mail adoption can, and I think that as we kind of have a, a new era of marketers really learning how to do it and how to do it well, I expect adoption as they, they learn, they get some success with it, uh, to continue. And, um, I, you know, I think that as marketers, we need to be agnostic about the channel that we use, but religious about the results. And uh, if the results are there and direct mail is continuing to reduce the results, that it will continue to be a growing and, 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 and channel that's used more and more. What, is, what are a couple examples of programs that you've seen? I mean, we talked a little bit about sort of some integration, um, you know, either programs that you guys have produced for clients or, you know, as a CMO yourself, I'm sure you're getting some of these in the mail. What stands out from, from you know, sort of the, the good to the great here? Yeah, well, I, to me, I think the pieces that stand out the most are the ones that are, are, are good marketing, right, because they, uh, they they provide some value to me and something that my, I might even be kind of anticipating because people are really using the data. So it's not just like a completely – it may be a new company that I'm not familiar with, but it's around a topic that I, I have a real um, – Interesting at the time, and so some of the little examples I, I, I think I think do do a really good job of uh, you know getting getting people's attention because they add a lot of value, and so ways you can think about using the data to do that uh, is, is is obviously key. It, then there's this, the, the kind of the the, the high impact you know um, get people's attention but still deliver some value, and I think some of the uh, fun campaigns that we've seen here at PFL you know we've seen account based marketing programs where where folks send a full size theater popcorn machine with everything it takes to make popcorn uh, to to it to a team, you know, and uh, that's going to get some attention in the office and build some brand awareness. And I, they're probably going to spend a few minutes and understand what it is your company does um, with you when you make that sort of impact. So, uh, you know, those are kind of big spectrum of what people send, um, you know, and that's definitely on the upper end. Uh, but other other just fun things, you know, are uh, boxes that have um, you know lights that turn on when you open things up. Uh, you see people using. Uh, scratch and sniff pieces and stuff like that that, that appeal to multiple different senses to, to really stand out in the marketplace. Awesome. Before we wrap up here, talk a little about the conference coming up. You guys did your first user conference in beautiful Bozeman, Montana last year. Uh, I had the honor of speaking. It was a great, great event. I know you got another one coming up here in October of this year. Talk a little bit about that, what people can expect to see at that conference. Yeah, so, so our, our, our uh, second annual conference, Big Sky, Big Ideas, uh, we're breaking into two parts this year. Uh, first part is be a, a, a user group for, for prospects and customers of, of ours who are really adopting these campaigns and great success for people to really do some workshop style uh, collaborative uh, work together uh, to figure out how they want to launch their, their strategy for their next year and their campaigns. And then the next part is uh, we just got a fabulous lineup of speakers. We got uh, Steve Lucas, uh, CEO of Marketo, and Peter Coffey from Salesforce, and Nicole, I'm drawing a blank on her last name, but uh, Vice President of uh, Customer Engagement from GoDaddy, um, already on the speaker list. And so uh, packed short speeches uh, with, with just great content, really just kind of framing uh, how can we have, uh, how can we do better at customer engagement as an industry.
Love that. Uh, where can people find out more about the conference? And I know you guys eat your own dog food, not only with direct mail packages, but also with great content yourself. As people want to learn more about direct mail, learn about omni-channel integrated programs, and learn more about the conference, where should people go? Yeah, uh, BigSkyBigIdeas.com. Uh, you can find everything you want on the conference. It's also linked to from uh, the site where you can find all of uh, the information Matt just mentioned about uh, direct mail and our, our software solutions, uh, PL.com. And so you can uh, find all the information you need right there. Awesome. Uh, time is up again. Uh, we usually get these conferences, these conversations go so fast, but I want to thank all get our guest, Daniel Gogler, who's the CMO at PFL, for joining us talking about direct mail. If you want to share this conversation with others on your team or just listen to it again, you can catch it in a couple days at salespipelineradio.com. Make sure you don't miss any of our future episodes by subscribing to our podcast at Google Play and the iTunes Store. And you can get a summary and the highlights from this conversation with Daniel at HeinzMarketing.com in just a couple days. Next, join us next week again and every week at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. We feature some of the best minds and best ideas in B2B sales and marketing. Until then, for my producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for listening. Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been listening to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Brought to you by the folks at Hines Marketing. On the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you.